Have you ever had a problem in Alteryx where you know that you've written some code, you've written some advanced formulations, some calculations, whatever it might be, and then you want to revisit it and use it again, but you can't remember where it is you, you used it, so you want to find it. Um, if you happen to be a developer, Alteryx developer like I am, where I write literally hundreds of workflows every year, it can become challenging to find what you know that you did before. I just can't remember where things are. So, for example, let's take a look at something that I did. Last year, I started a new job, and I have an Alteryx uh, directory here for this particular job. And if I go into that directory and I just say, let's take a look at how many workflows I have, well, so do a search for YXMD, and sure enough, we've got, it uh, looks like 148 different workflows. Okay, so <clears throat> what I did yesterday was to make my life a little bit easier, I wrote a, a, just a quick, very simple workflow, batch, a batch macro-driven workflow that allows me to find whatever I want to find. I'm going to show you three different kinds of cases of things that I might want to find. So how does this workflow, um, how does it work? I call it the, the driver to search workflows. So I want to find something in a workflow and it can be many different things. So let's take a look. So I'm using a directory tool to go to that directory where I had all my workflows stored. So that's that Alteryx directory and I include, so I'm gonna look for start.yxmd which are the XML files for those workflows. And then I include subdirectories. So when I run that, I end up with the, the 143 files that were found. <clears throat> there they are. And what the directory tool returns, I'm just going to keep the full path, the file name. And what I'm interested in is the last write time. <clears throat> so, once I sort based on the last write time, I can see the newest ones I've built from newest to oldest. So this is just development from, looks like February 14th, uh, not quite a year on this project, uh, almost a year, but that many workflows for different purposes. And so I'm gonna take that list of workflows and I'm gonna pass it into this batch macro. And what's inside this back macro but, uh, batch macro, I'm going to show you in a moment, but I'm basically passing in the full path um, into that macro. What is the full path? It's the full, the full path, the full file name, the path and the file name to the work to each each of those workflows. So I'm basically going to open up the, the XML files and do a search for whatever it is I'm looking for. So let's hop over into this batch macro. So quite simply, I have a, uh, a file. This is just going to be an XML file, so I'm opening it as a flat file. And a couple settings that you need to, to use, you have to use um, allow long lines turned on. So right here, allow long lines. And this is just basically, I'm reading it as a flat file with one field, it's going to be called field one, and you can see all the XML coming in for this example workflow here. So the uh, control parameter in the action tool is going to change the name of the XML file or of the workflow so that uh, as it sweeps through that list of 143, it opens a new XML file or workflow each time through. And all I'm doing then is opening it I'm, I have a flat file here, and then I'm just going to search within the XML file for whatever it is I'm looking for. So here's three examples of what I might be looking for. So in case one, I'm going to look for a variable. So the variable might be a form, the name of a field that I've created. In this case, I'm looking for a field that I called the day. So the day is created with a probably a a date time parse or a date time format or you know some operation that I created that 
field and I want to recover that. I want to find out how did I set that before. In case number two, I might want to find any formula that I might have used. Maybe I can't remember the name of the field, but I just want to look for all the formulas that I've written. So I'm going to search. And I'm, all I'm doing here is a find string command. So I'm finding string in field one, either called the day, or I'm looking for formula field expression. And if I look for formula field expression, that's going to return all the formulas that I've written. And in the third case, I'm going to look for um, this thing here, which is space fields equal. And I'm going to show what that looks like in a minute. So the first time I ran, the time I ran this right now, I'm looking for the day. So I find the day. And then um, when this thing runs, it returns the position of where the string was found in each line. And if it's a negative one, means it's not found. So I'm just basically returning only the trues, which are the search term, uh, the field's called search term here, where the value is greater than minus one. It's greater than minus one is found, pass that forward, and then send it back to the main workflow through the macro output. So when we run this, <clears throat> This goes and finds the direct the directory tool. It sweeps through, and it found it found the word the day 34 times. And as we look at it here, all I'm passing back is the position of where it was found in the string. And I'm I'm sorting from high to low on that, and then the file name for where it came from. <clears throat> so I ran that for those three different conditions, and let's take a look at. What, what's the value of this? So I pulled each of the re responses into, um, into Excel just to show what, how I could use them. So for example, because this was sorted from high to low, this is the example that I was looking for the day where the field is called the day. And this is what, um, this is how I built that field. So I can go into this, file name here, open it up, quickly open up that, and then grab that formulation for how I define the day. But I also see other places where I've used the day, either in a selection um, or some other, some other thing, another calculation or different types of operations where I'm using the word the day. So that's case number one, where I'm looking for a particular field. Case number two, is I'm looking for all the formulas that I've written, every formula that I've written. So this is a much more uh, deep output. And when we look at it, we could see that these are the formula field expressions. So this shows all of the different formulas that I've written for these different workflows. And there's probably going to be a lot of them. I don't know how many. Let's go down and take a look. Looks like 670 different formulas. Uh, that I've used throughout these different workflows. So therefore, if I'm looking for something in particular where I know a key term or whatever, I could just search it up here, uh, find it quite simply, but these are all the formulas. What's nice about this too, is I could then sort of work on ref the refinement of these to make sure that I'm using the same definitions in different workflows if, if that would be the case. And the third, the third case is where I'm looking for field names. And so these are um, even, even more so than, than even the formulas. This one has returns um, 21,000 records. So, this is every field of every workflow. So you can imagine these are the different names of the fields. But what I searched for was space field equals. So that gives me more records coming back. And I can see uh, how I've named fields. I can see all kinds of things about them. And up at the top, uh, again, because I've reverse sorted this based on the positioning of where the field name comes in. 
because in, in, th in this case here, where it's a formula field and an expression, the field equals comes out at the end. So a big formula tool will jump to the top where there's a lot of information in the formula tool. And it looks like I'm doing something with names here. So as you go down, then the formulas become less uh, complicated or less lengthy. They could still be complicated, but there's not as many if then else blocks or other things going on. So as I go down through this, there's just a, a huge amount of information about all these fields that I've used in these workflows that I've developed over the past year, which my brain can't keep track of all of it. But this quick tool allows uh, allows me to get back to get back to work quickly. I just have to run this one time, find what I want, go grab it, put it into my new workflow that I'm writing uh, or developing. So that's a, a quick tip, little trick I use for finding previous work. Um, you get to a point where after a decade, I've written literally thousands of workflows. I could do this on more than just one project, of course. This is just for one project. I could do this on all of my Alteryx workflows across the board. I could, instead of pointing to that project Alteryx directory, I could point to the root directory on this computer, and it would find even a lot more than just these project-specific workflows. The, the uh, It would pick up any workflows I've written for any project. So that's a general use case, uh, a nice way of using Alteryx as a search engine. I've, um, I've written articles before of using Tableau as a search engine, but this is an example of using Alteryx as a search engine, which gives you a, a, a great amount of capability. So thanks for listening. Talk to you later.